اوکی بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In the previous lecture, we talked about Van Dyck's socio-cognitive approach towards critical discourse analysis. Fine. So uh, in the previous class, we talked about uh, so various approaches, and then our focus was on the socio-cognitive approach. Fine. So we talked about the relationship between text, uh, society, and cognition. I mean textual structures, uh, social structures, and cognitive structures. Fine. Then uh, we talked about memory and uh, the cognitive process. Then the result of the cognitive, uh, cognitive process. Fine. Mental representations. And then uh, cognitive process, memory, cognitive process leading to mental representations and then further leading to human action, interaction and language use. Okay. Uh, we talked about short term memory and long term memory in the previous class and episodic memory and semantic memory. Fine. Uh, these things are very important. Episodic memory is personal. It contains personal information while semantic memory is uh, so social in nature. Fine. It uh, contains social information. Okay. Uh, we also talked about personal cognition and social cognition. Fine. Then personal cognition or mental model, we discussed it in detail. And then the social cognition as well. Fine. And then we talked about the description and analysis of discourse structures, keeping in view the uh, uh, personal cognition and mental cognition. In today's class, we're going to talk about Wynn Dyke's model for critical discourse analysis. Okay, he has proposed a, a, a particular model. If we, if we, you know, utilize that model, if we apply that model on a piece of discourse on a text, fine. For example, a speech of a politician. Okay, and uh, we apply. If we apply that uh, model, we can come to know about the hidden agenda. We can come to know about the hidden ideology. Fine. We can come to know the opaque power relations which are hidden inside that text, inside that discourse, inside that piece of discourse. Fine. Uh, discourse, you know, we may analyze the speech of a politician, we may analyze a short story, we may analyze the novel, the reluctant quantum fundamentalist, we may analyze any kind of discourse. Fine. Now, what is this model all about? It is all about the concept of us in the concept of them fine if you remember uh, our pre previous class ended up on the point of polarization find that when people adopt certain attitudes their attitudes then lead, lead them to polarize between us and them fine now so this entire model is all about the division of uh, good and bad on the basis of self and them fine self means this is what we discussed previously as well like self means our our in group members the us fine and them means the out group members the them for example we are all num numlians for example so we say us fine for self we we the numlians on the other hand the other university the other universities we Call, we refer to them as them fine we we use the pronoun we for us while they for them fine and they are the others for us okay this is a, a, a general example now if you look at the political parties for example so if if someone belongs to PTI so all the members of PTI are the us for that person fine the n group members we talked about n group and out group uh, members yesterday fine so uh, for example if Wasim belongs to PTI so all the members of PTI are his in group uh, in group members on the other hand if anyone belongs to uh, PMILIN for example if Mayro Nisa belongs to PMILIN so all the members of PMILIN are the in group members for Mayro Nisa while all the PTI members are her out group members fine so she will refer to the uh, PTI members is them, fine, and she will refer to the PMLN members as us, fine. So uh, this is the basic concept that this is what this entire model is all about, okay? Simply, it's uh, the basic purpose of this uh, model is to uh, explore a text, a discourse, to find out that how 
does a particular discourse producer tend to prove his in-group members right and the other group members wrong? Fine. This is what this entire model is all about. Now, this model, con uh, this model consists of certain indicators. Fine. So, which we will be looking for in various texts. Those those uh, indicators are to be explored in discourses. So, let's talk about some of those indicators in detail. Fine. Uh, there are actually more than 35 or 38 indicators proposed by Vin Dyke, but I have collected the uh, most important ones. Fine, uh, around 12 or 13. So the first indicator is actor description. The second one is authority, then disclaimer, then evidentiality, comparison, polarization, euphemism, hyperbole, irony, victimization, generalization, presupposition, and vagueness and hedging. Fine, these are the indicators which we are going to discuss in today, uh, today's class. The very first indicator is actor description. While analyzing a text, analyzing, uh, for example, newspaper articles of the Jung newspaper, fine. Analyzing the speeches of Imran Khan, analyzing the speeches of Donald Trump, analyzing the, uh, the novel, The Reluctant Fundamentalist, analyzing the short stories of Tariq Rahman, for example, The Game, fine. Uh, the Eighth Shopping, fine. The Dole, so, like so many texts are there which contain power relations. Fine, power relations based on uh, various bases, such as uh, gender bases, ethnic basis, fine, political basis, cultural basis, national basis, international politics, fine. Uh, you may even uh, explore that novel, The uh, To the Lighthouse, fine, on gender basis, where well, discrimination is there. Now, what? let's suppose when we are analyzing any kind of such a discourse, we have to look at the way the actors are described. Fine, actors means the people. Okay, now if you look at the, uh, for example, the newspaper articles of India and Pakistan. Okay, positive self description and negative other representation. Positive self representation while other, a uh, negative other representation. Now, if we look at the Pakistani newspaper articles, the Kashmiri people. And uh, the uh, you know Mujahideen and those people, all the Muslims, they are self for the Pakistani media. Fine, simply for the Pakistani discourse producers, they are the self and the us for the Pakistani media. Okay, while the the, 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 the Kashmiri Muslims are the others. They are the others for the Indian media. Are you getting me? Are you with me, all of you? Or are you sound asleep? Yes, yes. sir. Okay, good. Sir. Fine. Yes, sir. Fine. Sir. Good. Now, look at this. So, yes, the, the, uh, the Kashmiri Muslims, they are the others for the Indian discourse producers. Now, uh, what do the discourse producers do? They represent self. Self means the in-group members. They represent the in-group members in a positive way, while the in-group members, uh, the out-group members, the others are represented in a negative way. Fine. Now, how are people uh, represented? They are represented with the help of vocabulary items. Fine. For example, what, what kind of nouns are being used? Fine. What kind of verbs? are being used, what kind of adverbs, what kind of adjectives, and many more. Fine. So uh, uh, this is, you know, one of the features, one of the discursive strategies, okay? Uh, the use of different kind of verbs, because there are many more. Now, if you look at the Pakistani media, the Pakistani discourse producers, how, how do they represent the self, the us, the Kashmiri Muslims? They refer to them as the freedom fighters. Freedom fighters. On the other hand, the Kashmiri people, they, the Kashmiri Muslims, they are the others for the Indian discourse producers. So the Indian discourse producers represent them as terrorists. Fine. 
three terrorists who were killed in Kashmir yesterday. Terrorists. Fine. Now, uh, if if an event took, uh, takes place, for example, uh, in Kashmir, so how will the Indian, uh, the, the Pakistani media represent that uh, particular event? They will say, for example, uh, Kashmir may kal teen Kashmir yanku they were killed very brutally fine in order to represent them positively in order to show sympathy with them fine on the other hand if indian army soldiers are killed in kashmir by the hands of uh, the uh, pakistani uh, the muslim freedom fighters fine how will the pakistani media portray that fine because the indian soldiers are the others they are the others the outgroup members for the pakistani media so the pakistani media will portray them as uh kashmir me kal teen uh, uh hindustani soldiers ko mot ke gaat utar diya gaya now look at the, the verb being used shaheed kar diya gaya be darde ke sath shaheed kar diya gaya aur mot ke gaat utar diya gaya ya halak kar diya gaya fine so this is how if we look at discourses fine we analyze them and we look at the way the actors are described fine so discourse producers positively represent their in group members fine and they negatively represent the out group members so this is the very first indicator proposed by Van Dyke. fine the second indicator is authority authority means uh, like authority can be a person it can be an organization it can be a book what is meant by authority when people are producing discourses they give the references of expert people fine with a great people uh, in the history they may give examples and references to organization they may give examples and references of books fine simply they mention authority authority means like they mention the names of knowledgeable people expert people fine we regret people uh, which have been in the history fine in order to support their viewpoint in order to support their in group members and to oppose the out group members that is why people give references of uh, great people of organizations and of books fine i'm coming to examples it is an influential higher or superior power that exerts control it gives orders and enforces obedience in any particular situation fine Imran Khan, when he delivers a speech, fine, he starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmaduhu wa Nasulillah Rasulil Karim. Fine. So he gives references from the Holy Quran. Okay. He gives references from the life of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu in Sahabi Kiram. He gives references. He mentions the authority of Nelson Mandela. Fine. He mentions the authority of king martin uh, luther the junior fine he mentions the authority of uh, hazrat abu bakr siddiq Talanho, hazrat umar Talanho. fine in the same way he talks about western democracy organization he talks about uh, you know uh, Khilafati Medina, Riyasati Medina. Okay. In the same way, he gives references from uh, the Holy Quran. He gives references from some other great books of uh, written by the expert people. Fine. Uh, what for? In order to give support to his ideas. Fine. In order to support his view stance. In order to support his perspective. Fine. In order to influence other people. Okay. In order to exert control. In order to make the people obey his rules and regulations and his orders. Fine. For example, if he, or he, if he wants the people to be patient. Okay. Uh, what will he do uh, if, he, for example, this g g g during COVID-19, if he wants the people to stay at home, fine. If he wants the people to obey 
to abide by the rules and uh, regulations, the SOPs of the state in COVID-19. He will refer to Misag Khilafat uh, Medina, Riyasat Medina. He will talk about that disease. I think the name is, is it Tayon? What is the name of the disease uh, which was in vogue during the Taun, life? Taun, Taun. G? Taun. Taun. Taun, okay. Taun. Yes, exactly. Taun. Taun. Exactly, exactly. Fine. So, uh, Imran Khan, he'll refer to the Riyasati Medina in the life of the Holy Prophet. <laughs> Fine. And to the books of certain ahadith. Clear? So, this is how people, uh, discourse producers, they mention authorities. Fine, in order to support their view stance, in order to support their uh, the ideology of their in group member and the ideology of the out group, and to uh, resist the ideology of the out group members. Then the third indication is disclaimer. Fine, disclaimer means the negation in such a case. Okay, disclaimer simply means discourse producers disclaim something wrong done. Anything done wrong, that is what a discourse producer disclaims. Fine, they disclaim it, means they do, uh, they do not claim it. Uh, uh, you must have heard on uh, Pakistani television uh, uh, various channels that Zardari ne ya Bilawal Bhutti ne Bilawal Bhutti Zardari ne attacks ki society attack ki fala jaga me jo society attack ho gaya, uski muzammat kar de. Fine. It means that Bilawal Bhutti, uh, Bilawal Bhutti Zardari disclaimed, he disowned that event. He, with the help of his discourse, he actually let the people know that he has nothing to do with that attack. Fine. Same is the case with Imran Khan as well. Okay. Like he disclaims the things done wrong in the past. Fine. Like, for example, the, uh, the, the various reasons of financial crisis in Pakistan, so, or if, if, if there is anything wrong with the Pakistani government or the Pakistani uh, economy, or uh, for example, the, the system of electricity in Pakistan. So he disclaims these things. He says that these things have not been done by him or his political party or during his tenure. Fine. So people, discourse producers, they disclaim such sort of things which have been done wrong. Clear? Now, the negation in such case, uh, such a case primarily serves as a form of positive self-representation. Uh, self Fine. A face keeping. Like they, they keep their face, they keep their public self-image. Okay? So this is what uh, disclaimer means. They disclaim things being done wrong. They disown the wrong deeds simply. They do, they do not own them, okay? And because they do not want the uh, blame to be put on their shoulders. That is why they disclaim such sort of things. Then the fourth indicator is uh, evidentiality. They provide certain evidences in order to prove themselves right, to prove the, themselves mean their in-group members right and the out-group members wrong, fine. Now, if you look at the speech of uh, Imran Khan, fine, when he went to the United States of General, uh, uh, sorry, the United States of America, to the UN General Assembly, he delivered some speech, fine. So he described the actors how did he describe Narendra Modi? Fine. How did he describe the Indian soldiers as very brutal human beings? Fine. How did, how did he describe the innocent uh, Kashmiri people? Now look at my discourse. I'm also Pakistani. Fine. I'm also a patriot. Fine. A citizen of this country. So I'm referring to them, the Indian uh, people, the Indian soldiers as uh, brutal human beings. And I'm referring to the Kashmiri people as innocent people fine so uh, imran khan how did he uh, represent the how did he describe the actors fine in the new in general assembly when he uh, mentioned certain authorities like he talked about the holy quran the holy prophet he uh, talked about the western democracy fine he talked about nelson mandela and many others he disclaimed certain things done wrong in kashmir fine in the various attacks 
uh, you know, which were done in the India. So he disclaimed certain things. Now, discourse producers they provide evidentiality. Evidentiality means they provide evidences in favor of the in-group members and against the out-group members. Okay, so they do not rely on the basis of blames. Fine, they do not rely on blames only. Rather, they uh, provide evidences. Clear? Then. Uh, they come up with strong evidences to prove their opponent to be guilty of a guilty party. Fine, just as Imran Khan did when he went to the United States of General Assembly, he talked about the brutalities brought about by the Indian soldiers in Kashmir. Fine, he talked about the people uh, being killed over there. Fine, and uh, many evidences he provided. Evidences can be in the form of facts and figures, statistics, etc. Fine. Uh, similarly, look at the speeches of uh, Ahmadinejad, for example. Do you know Ahmadinejad, uh, an ex-Iranian president? Do you know him? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, if you analyze his speeches uh, uh, to the UN General Assembly, you will come to know the various examples, the various evidences he has provided over there. Okay, to prove himself innocent in all the Muslim world and to prove the Western people wrong, the Western power. Fine, like he sometimes talks uh, talks about the uh, people uh, the, who have been killed in Afghanistan, in Libya, Syria, fine, uh, Palestine, and many, uh, in many other countries, Muslim countries. So people provide discourse producers, they provide evidences to prove themselves correct, right, and to prove the others wrong. Fine. Uh, then comparison, people make comparison. Uh, comparison is an act of looking for similarities and dissimilarities in discourse. Fine. For example, claims versus actions. Comparison. People uh, look at Imran Khan. He compares claims versus actions. The claims of the previous political parties while his actual actions okay actions of uh, this present government his own political party fine uh, people may uh, compare north and south people may compare rich and poor fine imran khan he also compares rich and poor sometimes he talks about stunted growth if you remember his very first speech when he became the prime minister of pakistan and he delivered a speech to the na uh, pakistani nation fine so uh, he compared poor versus rich okay uh, similarly people may compare black and white they may uh, compare privatization of organizations and nationalization of uh, organization fine there are so many other uh, hundreds of, uh, hundreds of examples can be explored in uh, discourses so they find out similarities. Why do they compare things? Sometimes, but look at Imran Khan, he compares Pakistan to Riyasati Medina. That is comparison, fine. Sometimes he compares Pakistani dem democracy to the, uh, that democracy, uh, Western democracy. To find out the similarities, fine, and differences between the Western democracy and Pakistani democracy. Clear? So this is what discourse producers, they compare and uh, they compare things, two things, uh, or two ideas to find out similarities and differences between them and to prove what is the purpose. The purpose is to prove them sim the same wrong, or to prove themselves right and the others wrong. Fine. Then we have polarization. Polarization, it's, uh, apparently it seems uh, similar to comparison, but it is, it is much different, fine. It is a categorical division of people or ideas, fine. It is a categorical division of people in group, fine. Us, in group us and out group them. Simply they divide the in group and out group members, fine. But it's not about people only, it's about ideas as well, fine. Polarization can be on any basis. There are multiple bases for polarization. Polarization simply means a clear cut division into two. Fine. When people draw, when someone draws a line, a binary, fine. So on this side, we have one thing, and on this side, we have a completely opposite thing. Fine. Now, polarization divides individuals or ideas into two totally opposing groups. Totally opposing groups. Okay. Like, uh, for example, 
polarization of uh, west and east a person who is uh, producing the discourse might talk about east and west and con completely different ways completely different ways the person will draw a line between these two fine now uh, look at the marxists Mar marxists they draw a line between the two economic system two economic systems one is capitalism the other is socialism or communism fine similarly if we look at feminists so they draw a clear cut line between the two and on, on the one hand they have you know the uh, patriarchal uh, mindset on the other hand they put the anti patriarchal ideologies okay so this is how categorization people may talk about present and past imran khan for example he may polarize he may draw a line between the present situation of pakistan and the past situation of pakistan so here he will uh, talk about his own uh, you know good deeds which he and his political member uh, his party members have done for pakistan in here he may talk about he may talk about uh, you know the other political parties so this is how people may draw a line a clear cut line fine uh, yes polarization uh, then euphemism Euphemism means replacement of an apparently unpleasant or offensive word or expression or phrase with one that is mild or pleasant. Fine. Um, uh, discourse producers, when they come to know that there is a word or a phrase or a sentence, okay, which they are going to utter, so they drop out that utter uh, that utterance, and instead of that utterance, they go for a word which is pleasant fine they go for an expression which is less threatening fine so this is what we call euphemism for example the word uh gherat, okay but if if you have uh, observed the politicians or the media people they usually they do not use the word gherat. instead of the word gherat, they prefer using the word honor fine because the world era uh, though it is not informal it is quite formal but still if you look at the world honor it seems more euphemistic in nature than gherat fine simply in pushtu we say the okhra audakshe ke farakte fine so bat karne ke dang hota hai na so this is how like people they go for euphemistic terminology euphemistic terms okay uh, the freedom fighters and terrorists again also uh, uh, euphemism okay um, uh, similarly we say who fought pakia okay he passed away we we do not say these many people died we say people passed away because we for people think that uh, to say that uh, or simply uh, we say he is dead we may say uh, i uh, people when uh, their relatives die they may uh, they, they usually update such sort of things on Facebook and WhatsApp nowadays. So they, they do not say my father or my relative, my brother, my cousin is dead. Now, why? Because this is something informal to say dead. That is not euphemistic. It is not something pleasant. Fine. It is very unpleasant. Okay. It is something offensive. So they say my relative passed away. Instead of uh, uh, is dead, they say passed away. Okay. So this is what euphemism is. Uh, then hyperbole hyperbole means exaggeration okay the deliberate exaggeration of certain facts or figures used for the sake of uh, you know heightened effect people exaggerate things in order to heighten to produce a heightened effect fine to bad ko bada chala ke pesh karna exaggeration okay to people exaggerate the good deeds done by the in-group members and the bad deeds, the wrong deeds done by the out-group members. Fine. A speaker may use certain exaggerated expressions. It may also add humor or uh, to a situation. But this is what usually the politicians do not do. Fine. Uh, exaggeration, if you look at the speeches of Imran Khan, so sometimes he exaggerates the corruption done by uh, Zardari, Nawaz Sharif, Shabbat Sharif, and those other people. Fine. Uh, look at simply look at Fawad Sudri or look at uh, that lady. Uh, uh, 
of Firdus and Shikawan. How do they exaggerate things? The wrong deed done by the other political parties, PT, uh, sorry, PMLN and uh, PPP, fine. And how do they exaggerate the, the good things, okay, the good deeds done by their own in-group members, by the political by the political members of PTI, Imran Khan and uh, these people, fine. Uh, now, look at the corruption uh, done by, uh, uh, let me tell you once again, I'm an apolitical person and a, a teacher is supposed to be, fine, uh, an apolitical person. But uh, these are just examples. I'm not supporting any political party, though. Uh, let me tell you very openly that I uh, yeah, like yeah. Imran Khan. Okay, not talking about his party, just Imran Khan, I really like him. So uh, look at Firdus Ashkawan or uh, Fawad Choudhury. Uh, how did they exaggerate the corruption of Shakan Abbasi and Shabazz Sharif, Nawaz Sharif, and those people? Fine. In, uh, even. Uh, Hussein Nawaz, okay, but nowadays they are very much silent on the corruption that is done by uh, this gentleman, uh, the richest person, one of the rich richest persons in Pakistan. Uh, what is his name? Malak Riyaz. Uh, Malak Riyaz, uh, not the political person. Uh, there are, who, who has once been the Jangir Tarin. Exactly, Jangir Tarin. Jangir Tarin. Jangir Tarin. Jangir Tarin. Jangir Tarin. Fine. Now, uh, they're not exaggerating the wrong deed, the corruption done by Jangir Tarin. While well, they were, they did exaggerate the corruption done by those other people, the outgroup members. Fine. They did not exaggerate the good deed done by uh, the political members of female and PPP. While well, they are exaggerating the good deeds done by Imran Khan, even just the plans, not the deeds even. The, the deeds which have just been planned so far, not actually done indeed. Fine, but they are exaggerated, uh, exaggerating those things. So this is what hyperbole is. Then uh, irony, uh, that is for the sake of humor sometimes, but most of all it is for the sake of emphasis. Fine, uh, different or Opposite, uh, what is irony? When we say something and we mean another thing simply. Fine, irony, ironi ironical statements. Now, uh, irony is uh, different or opposite to the literal meaning. Okay, when we say something and the literal meaning is completely different, the internal meaning is completely different. Fine, situations contrary to what one expects. Now, if we look at ironies, uh, in the speeches of Imran Khan, if we observe, for example, so he utters so many ironies. When he talks about Nawaz Sharif, for example, nowadays the, the health of Nawaz Sharif, okay, or the uh, Shabazz Sharif, for example, when Shabazz Sharif, uh, in the holy month of Ramadan, when he, when he was uh, investigated by NAB, and he said that all his income has uh, come from those 10 or 12 uh, you know, buffaloes. So uh, look at the political members of PTI. They said, okay, uh, they said that only um, that we are buying from them so that our business will grow. That was, you know, so many ironies were in vogue in their speeches uh, in those days. So they uh, uh, incorporate ironies in their speeches in order to support uh, their own point of view, to support their in-group members, and to oppose their outgroup members okay moving to the uh, moving to the 10th uh, uh, indicator victimization okay victimization simply means that people present their in group members as victimized victimized by the hands of the outgroup members fine like if we look at imran khan when he went to the uh, un general assembly um, pace to hear my pace that is very really, uh, fast because um, uh, I'm trying my level best to cover this topic within the time allotted okay within the 40 minutes now Imran Khan when he went to the UN General Assembly he uh, presented himself in the Pakistani people in the Kashmiri people particularly and all the Muslims of the world they presented them as the victims of Islamophobia fine victims by the hands of the brutality by the uh, by the hands of the western people the non-muslim people fine similarly imran khan he talks about stunted growth he uh, present the poor people of pakistan as the victims of uh, you know poverty by the hands of PT, P, P, P million and PPP. So this is what victimization is, fine. Then uh, we have generalization. Uh, 
they generalize general points like they they take specific events specific examples and gen they generalize those examples to something very broad fine uh, it is also kind of exaggeration hyperbole but hyperbole is something different that contains exaggeration here it contains generalization okay they take specific examples and they generalize they make generalizations based broad claims based on those specific instances uh, presupposition people presuppose things okay uh, presuppose for example if we, if i say that uh, uh, anyone in the class for example uh, wasim is now uh, wasim has been very regular in the past uh, three, in the last three classes so what am i presupposing is that wasim was not regular before that okay uh, wasim this is not that's just an example clear so uh, the king of France is bald. Now, what I presuppose is that France has got a king. Okay? So, people presuppose things. Uh, look at the speeches of Imran Khan. It means that the economy of the country has been destroyed by the other political members, political parties in the first 20 years. That is what he actually presupposes. The last one, uh, vagueness or hedging. When uh, they say that something is politically, uh, politically inappropriate to say, so they you know they uh, they do not say things clearly rather they uh, they go for vagueness okay they, the things which they utter are vague they are not clear and that is why they have uh, they hide realities clear so this is all about today's discussion for the question and answer session let's move to uh, let's start another session please